So as you can see, this is a wee bit rattly. <laughs> <laughs> Just a touch. <laughs> I was going to say typical John Deere, but I better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on your paid or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back for another day at the bright lights of Rosharkin. I see you have gathered up a few more. You've have, you have four in here now. There's a whole lot, there's a whole lot of victims. There needs to be more, and the will have to go out first. Plan of attack. Get your hatch off and get that out of my workshop. Just looking, some boy has been out of this here with a plasma cutter to create these holes. What, what for mounting it? Yes. I think them holes just didn't line up when they wanted to fitter. Either that or some boy didn't know these holes were slotted. It's a bit rash, isn't it? So she is six in the back or four? And there's six up there, forward on her, and then there's a two there. And a four there. That's that well bent down, it's catching in this hatch. Just the force of the rams bringing it in by it. What's the plan? Mr. Getty will sort that. Grab be the inner then, there, John. You would take her to the Navarra? Mm hmm. Oh, look, there's not too bad. Uh, you get the light in, but. <laughs> Another sort of thing you'd like to drop in your toe. Yeah. The old one's on it, the spring. Just tell them the spring it, that one's in bits, and the bolt was broke. So. Okay. Right, we're now we're at Getty Engineering and wait to look into this hitch here. So what have you found since you opened her up? Well, we analysed it here, stripped it down and analysed it and uh, a few wee cracks here and there and a few worn holes. A couple of wee cracks around here at the lifting points at the main hinge point at the back. She's wore in here, so we'll cut these here out and put in new ones in there. Excessive wear in her locking pins, as you can see. Not very tight. We'll make new ones of those. Repair these lift hooks, the other bit of the hatch, the slide bit, we're machining that at the moment. We're going to uh, build some of the holes up and, build, and bore them out, and some of the holes we're going to bore out and put a bush in them. The reason we've bored that there out, these holes are slotted, so we'll make an oversized pin uh, for the top. In the centre bit here, we can't make an oversized pin because uh, the existing holes in your hook and your drawbar has to stay the same to keep everything standard. What are you making or what are you doing? There's a couple of oversized pans just for the head.
track's more visible now. You can see our wee black line there. There to there. Yes. That's probably caused by the hatch getting abuse here. It's probably pulled it and stretched it slightly. Because it's not welded inside. You can't weld it inside, it's just welded right here and here. Some fellas would call that a root weld because that's the bottom of the V. Yes. If you have a V, uh, the bottom weld will be called the root. First weld. So I'll put one more over the top of that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to cut we're going to cut these bosses off here and make new ones and replace them. Well, you have to make a new pen for the that as well? Make a new pen as well, yeah. Do you all have your own tools or just a, everybody's? Oh, everybody shares. Everybody shares, but I'm the only one that buys them. Right, this, this one of our bosses cut off. I'm going to do it slightly different than what the original does, original manufacturer does. He, he welds the boss on the outside of the hole. Nothing wrong with it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my boss down inside that, flush with the back edge, uh, because it gives it more, more wear more wear and land and more support and it's much stronger as well. Your boss now will sit where it's at here originally and down through this existing hole here. So you're going to end up with two thirds more uh, more metal. Would that ever need grease there on the guy you put a grease nipple on it? No that'll not need grease because the whole idea is to keep it keep it fixed in this. Don't let it turn on that and let it turn in the other bit here because that, that's a chip from one side to the other so that's plenty of, plenty of wear. Well, how long did that take to make? Yeah, about an hour roughly. <laughs> Another one today. Of it. Right, so it's basically starting with bar and wind it down to whatever you need. Yeah, that's a bit of bar there. Start with the small bit of bar at that. Turn it down, part it off. And start to wind and do the hole on the inside. I'm not lying there today, but that's one of the bushes for the for your end panel, end of the hips. And then that there's well to hand. We have it apart now, right now, but see in there. Them boys there as well that on the inside. Instead of up and closed, you know, where yours is closed, she breaks them off too. And she also, see there, no. That's uh, the hitch been out a bit. And she just buckles it up. See What's that off? That's off a, a new hull. Say a new hull in our case. Or a Vultra. Much the same setup, you know, but it's, it's just not as well thought out. You know. Did you hear that people? He's saying that the new Holmes aren't as well thought out as the John Deere's. <laughs> That's official from an engineer. An engineer said that. <laughs> oh, <aye. laughs> the arm's even bent in that too. You're making me feel good about my hitch. <laughs> nice stone cold broke off then. Was that a disaster when that breaks? Is that a, a casualty in the road or just a, ho a hobble at home job? Uh, well, you could be looking the pan could jam somewhere. See that? He wasn't so lucky that boy because the pan was broke. He broke the pan as well. So he had absolutely nothing holding it. Only because the hitch was bent so bad it jammed. Kept it from pulling out.
explain to me what you're going to do. Well, I'm going to uh, level the bottom of this here where, it was, where somebody has lifted the hook up between the slide and the hook. So we're just going to level these bumps out of it here. So how much pressure do you think it'll take to put that back into shape? I could say about 40 odd ton or so. 30 to 40 ton. There's one side stain. One half stain there. See the difference? I suppose if it was that hard to straighten, it wouldn't have been that easy to bend in the first place. Aye. Well, we just straightened it roughly to get the slide out. A wee bit of heat. So I see three big yellow strips in there, and there's one out here. Hmm. What do they do? That there's the uh, wear strips for sliding in and out. The, the centre piece of the hitch, the telescopic bit, slides in these nine and slides. Basically, it's to keep it from wearing into steel to steel and keep it quieter. If it's not greased, it's still, it's still sliding in the nylon, sort of stuff, lubricant, so it is. How hard is nylon compared to steel? Like? It's only made for slow speeds, like a slide or a bush. But the actual nylon will wear the steel away before the steel or the nylon will wear, always. So, so why are we replacing them? Well, there's a wee bit of wear in both bits, so you're accommodating a bit of wear. Like here's the old ones there. They're not too bad. Probably for theirs, it's in the tech that they're not too bad. Does it matter that they're the one that came out of is a bit bowed? Not really, that? not really, because the weight of the hitch will straighten it. But you're, you're talking about two to three mil of wear on each slide at the moment. So if you have that in the top and that in the bottom, you've gained four or five mil tightness again. So we're out here much quicker. And at the back, because the hitch is down to counter lever, counter lever over this front edge. So these, these front edges and the back edges will be more, more, more than the middle. Something enough to fit? Oh, it's something enough to fit, yeah. The only thing is you have to, you have to take the hitch off nearly to fit them because you have to take the ram assembly out. Uh, and take the centre slide out to get your hand in to get the wee bolts tightened. Uh, it's not something you'd want to have to replace really before you're doing the whole hatch. I would say every five, six thousand hours. Just two yard clips or what? Two yard clips, that's all it is, but they're pretty tight. That's you. That's the ram in place. Give that grease that a wee test just to make sure it's sticking grease at the back. No. Change that grease, but no. Next move. Next move, we'll slide the uh, the inner bit into the insider and drop the pin in through the end of the arm here. And put the back pin through it when we lift it into the other piece. So what all have you done to this? Well, this here was bored out to oversize. This here was bored out and rebushed. And the holes in the bottom side here was built up with weld and remachined. And as you can see, the bush here can't get out. It's locked tight and pressed in with locked tight, but it can't get out. There's what I was telling you about there, uh, where they go, where nylon will wear steel away before nylon will wear. See there? That's in the bottom side that the pressure's on. Both sides just wore a bit the same. Thing. 
finish it. That's your, uh, that's your pin for holding the ram in there. That's what I was telling you about no grease when it's fitted new with no grease in it. It's just growing and that just sits in there. Can't get out because the head's always in below this here. So it can never get out on you. Not unless you have the hitch fully out and the tractor over the body. <laughs> Fall out there. <laughs> We're definitely not planning to do that anytime soon. <laughs> this is just a wee safety device that if the ram or if the pin fails in the ram, keeps the ram from pulling out. And why does it bend like that then? Well it's just over the years the ram thump 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 against the side of it, you see there. And it's just pulled it. That's your, your arm sitting in here like, like that. When you shoot your arm out, the chrome rod comes out this side and your hitch goes right out to touch the end of the cylinder there. Just wear and tear. When your hitch is fully out, you can adjust that so that uh, it shouldn't be bending it. Pull that out again, Stephen, and we'll adjust that just for now, mate. If you keep an eye on that, John, you'll see that moving. See? See it moving back and forth there. You yeah. see when Stephen pulls the hitch out there. That's, that's acting as your stop. So how do you set that when you're rebuilding it? You should set it? Well, just when you have the hitch fully out, set the stop fully back and then it's supported in the back side. What about that lateral movement like that? Anyway, there's a little bit of play. Nothing you can do with that, it's just the way a hitch is made. It just it slides in its channel, and there's no slides on the sides at all. That's, that's just. Fully in, it's a wee, wee bit tighter because these here are sort of locked against the face here. You want to keep that well, or we keep it in there so the wee, the wee plunger can slide up and down quite freely. Yes. So it doesn't stick up. Or stick stick on your hitch. The idea of the, the wee hole in the bottom of the pin is just for holding purposes for tightening the top screw, top of the spring. See the hole there? Yep. The o ring's just on there to try and keep the wee plug up from filling with water. It's just a wee nylon plug that we're dropping down into the bottom, uh -huh. of, bottom of the hole. So when we tighten up this screw, it's acting as a lock nut. Right. That's all. Simple as that. Simple as that, and then in the top here, John, there's just a wee, a wee uh, circlip, just to keep it from bunching out. You know I wasn't a mechanical engineer, because I can't quite yet figure out how the circlip isn't taking the pressure. Well, the spring, the spring and the bolt can come up through that cap. Well, it's a big fat end on the bottom, and it can't come all the way through. It can't come through, no. No, it can't drop out. But the, your pin, your pin and the, cap screw can come up through that cap there and that wee circlips just to keep the whole thing from snapping out yes. when it's under full pressure. So that there now should, might be a wee bit sticky for there too but that there will travel up and down now. See? Yes. That's, that's travelling up and down now. And then that'll, when you stay in your hitch, when you stay in your hitch, that'll, that'll snap down into your hole. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. The bit I'm really looking forward to seeing is how close is this eye going to get to that edge that you've lovely cleaned up. <laughs> That's the only bit I really care about, if I'm honest, you know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't tried it. <laughs> Have you shares in the grease or what? No. Oil's well down at the moment. <laughs> it is. So in the end we decided we didn't need a new hook. Is that right? Yeah. But you haven't changed the, the, the size of those pins or the holes or anything like that, no, so I can really. get a new hook if I need one in yeah. the future. Well, these here was just made to suit the, 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 the hook. Sweet as not, John. Well, what do you think? Is it worth padding that face up a bit or not? Would you let it well, be? Well, I didn't, I didn't take a hook put anything on that face, I just tidied it up, it was all bores, sharp edges, and I just tidied it up, so. I thought that hitch always looked a bit strange there, you know, because, like, most of them wouldn't have that. Or that depth that, there. That depth of a gap there. Yeah. She's a bit unusual that way. Well, that's probably why that, that edge was all down. People was going in there with the eye of the thriller, and over your hook, and then lifting her up, and that's why it was probably dinged down. Because we just we just levelled it like. How many hours is on the tractor now? Ten thousand. Well, I think she's she's good enough to to do near enough the exact same again. A flange and sticks it. <laughs> <laughs> no bother, horse. They're good good for thirty of them engines. As I was saying to John earlier, uh, so happens today. Uh, I'm 20 years in business today. My daughter's got me this cake to celebrate it. This here's a photograph of the week before I started up. That's my original workshop, which is no longer here now. It was in the middle of the yard, which was a, a calf house. I yes. modified it into a workshop, and that was us putting in one of the layers in through that door. Well, how'd you get into engineering? What made you start? Don't really know. Uh, well, it was always in my blood. I just like welding and filtering and screwing and making stuff uh, from his new age and uh, my father was a joiner and so was my grandfather and they wanted me to take up the journey but you know, I thought wood was too soft. <laughs> I'd rather something a bit harder <laughs> and I, I never took up the journey at all. So hopefully, hopefully in the next 20 years I'll be starting to take it a wee bit easier. Well, congratulations from the Farm Fix team. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>